You guys hear that? Writer-director John Patrick Thomasek brings us Hell's Half Acre. This is a low-budget haunted prison movie and it focuses a group of struggling YouTubers who do a kind of urban exploration show on YouTube but they are kind of not finding much success. So they decide to go to this particular kind of prison and they get a new a kind of a cast member if you like joining them on that kind of particular trip who may have ulterior motives for being there and uh, one of the other groups have discovered this this abandoned prison has a long history of having the worst kind of convicts there and it's apparently haunted inevitably they do end up kind of going in there seemingly getting trapped and obviously are menaced by a variety of spooks who want to cause them harm in particular two kind of uh, serial killers who have seemingly made a pact with the devil before they were executed. Along the way they encounter another group of ghost hunters in the kind of the same prison and what will happen you will have to watch the movie and find out. So let's talk about what I think works with this movie. So this is a low budget movie but one thing this movie does have is a pretty good location shoot. Now it looks like they have genuinely been able to shoot in some kind of prison or at least that's what it appears to be. Um, it's a little bit well kept for an abandoned prison, for, for, it hasn't been kind of uh, used in decades but nonetheless you can't deny that obviously it's a kind of a great location and I think they, they make good use of it in this kind of particular kind of uh, this, you know, this story really and really kind of forms a big part of the kind of the actual story itself. I actually kind of quite like some of the kind of the characterization that was done with this movie. For example, our kind of our lead guy, this kind of YouTube um, uh, kind of guy who kind of owns the channel, doesn't really want to turn it into a ghost hunting kind of channel because he feels that's kind of cheap and exploitative and doesn't really believe in it. So he kind of wants to keep it really as a kind of urban exploration. Whilst his girlfriend is kind of more interested in the kind of the supernatural and is quite keen to kind of explore that. But I quite like the idea that they're not going there specifically for that. They're actually going there for other reasons, really. I also quite like the fact that we have some uh, rival kind of groups of people. There's actually two different groups of people that they'll come across. Um, and it kind of gives it that kind of competitive edge to a kind of certain degree. And you can understand it kind of gives them motivation to kind of keep on going. And I quite like the kind of the interactions between these kind of two groups. I thought they were kind of quite good. Um, now this is a low budget movie, so we can't expect mega kind of like production value. But I think the kind of the effects and kind of what they've done with the kind of the spirits. There's scenes, for example, where we have one of the kind of the uh, ghosts kind of walking on the wall. And there's kind of people kind of like getting um, seemingly rotting and decomposing in front of our eyes and things like that. So I've got to say, for a low budget film... And we'll put that asterisk there. I actually kind of quite enjoyed some of the kind of the effects here. The movie is quite well paced. I, th I don't think it get, takes too long before we kind of get into the kind of the action. But we still, I feel, get a reasonable amount of uh, characterization. And I think the characters kind of are, you know, fairly kind of well established before we kind of go in there. And, you know, the story is quite predictable. And we'll come on to that again in a minute. But, um, yeah, it, it doesn't take too long before we kind of start getting kind of uh, supernatural kind of stuff starting to happen. And I quite liked we kind of had somewhat of an epilogue with this movie. Uh, some of these films that you watch them are thinking, do you know what, I'd really like to know what would happen kind of after the fact. And this movie does actually have a couple of sequences that kind of take place after the kind of the, the, kind of the bulk of the story. It's not a particularly kind of scary movie, but it's a kind of a fun B-movie supernatural romp. Okay, so what doesn't work? I thought the biggest issue for me, sadly, is I think the acting is... Um, not good by some of the cast here. I think some people do an okay job for a B-movie kind of standard film, but some of them, unfortunately, uh, I, I really feel are struggling to deliver any type of emotions when they speak. Again, we've got to look at the fact this is a lower budget film. Maybe this isn't going to be established actors. Maybe it isn't even actors, you know, actors at all. Could be kind of people, friends of the director and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, the acting isn't brilliant. Um, and I think some of, some of the actors here really struggle to deliver the lines. Now, it seems to me that they're kind of more or less reading the script um, 
more or less intact. And I say that because some of the kind of the line delivery and the way these kind of these words are, are kind of said seem quite unnatural, both in the way that they're kind of written um, and, and the way that they're delivered. So I think what it needed to happen was uh, this script maybe not read verbatim, um, because that's what it seemed like. I don't know if that was the case. It's just how it seems. And these actors being able to kind of put a little bit more kind of emotion behind it and kind of own the characters a little bit more. I, like I said, I quite like the fact we, I feel we get to know the characters, but their kind of delivery of lines and the kind of the, uh, the emotional kind of reactions to things I feel was kind of severely lacking. The, mo the movie is also criminally predictable. Um, there are twists, and I use that in air quotes, that can happen through the movie. Uh, that are so obvious. I mean, it's a, I think the movie thinks it's being smart when the reveals happen, but it's like, I, I guess it's the minute uh, that, 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 you know, something happens on screen, things like this. Um, the movie seems, you know, I like the location here. And we actually get a, a, an, an initial location in this kind of funeral home, it's kind of sets up our group. But I have to say, despite in both locations, them apparently being abandoned, they seem in awfully good condition. You know, there's there's very little kind of signs of wear or decay in these kind of buildings. They seem very clean. There's a couple of shots in the kind of prison where I feel it looks a little bit more decrepit, but uh, for the most part, uh, you know, they, the, the locations do look very, very kind of like um, clean and uh, tidy outside of a bit of clearly just trash that they've kind of thrown around to make it look like that. But it doesn't really have that much of a lived in feel, uh, especially the kind of the first location. And I have to say as well, it's a little bit kind of um, overlit at times. I mean, the, the prison especially, um, you know, we meant to believe it's in the middle of the night at certain, at certain times during this kind of uh, um, exploration. Yeah, it's kind of brightly lit and it's kind of like, oh man, it just doesn't really kind of have that ambiance. Again, there, there are a couple of sequences where it does, but, uh, um, you know, it, it's a little bit lacking here and there. Some of the makeup of these ghosts, I think, are a, are a little bit heavy-handed. For example, we have these kind of ghoulish, uh, demonic prisoners, and they have, like, really thick, kind of, like, painted-on, kind of, like, eye sockets. And I think it's a little bit, a little bit more subtlety could have been done there, because it kind of just looks like they've got thick black lines, you know, around their eyes. And I get they're kind of going for a demonic, inhuman look, but it borders on, it looks like, Halloween makeup rather than it had it been kind of worked in a little bit more subtly and maybe not been quite as severe I think it could have had it could have looked more like it like it's a case of real decay on someone but at the moment it kind of looks more like kind of Halloween makeup I mean it's kind of like I understand what they were going for and stuff like this but it just seems like sometimes less is more in these films um you know so there's that. So it's, it's it ends up being a, a watchable film, to be honest with you. I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed the story. Even though the story is super predictable, it seems like it's kind of more or less kind of aping other movies like you'll, you've, you've seen before. For example, it's, it's, it sounds very reminiscent of Grave Encounters. But this is not a found footage movie, even though I think it had it been... The, had it been, I actually think it may have been a little bit more effective. Um, especially since our characters are meant to be youtubers seems like an odd choice to have it as a traditionally filmed movie uh but yeah it's, it's still a watchable film i kind of enjoyed it but i'm used to kind of watching b movies so i feel like that is the case you will probably enjoy it if you're kind of not expecting a high highly polished well-produced kind of end product if you you know if you look a little you like a little bit rough and ready kind of um that sort of thing a little bit of a kind of, uh, you know, guerrilla filmmaking, so to speak. I think you probably enjoy it for the most part. It isn't a particularly deep film, but it's not not a bad film. I'm really let down, unfortunately, by some uh, some poor acting, I think, uh, which I've mentioned. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.